So are you looking for ways to increase your swing speed? You've seen all these videos out there about how you need to increase your swing speed, increase your swing speed to hit it longer, hit it further, and all that, okay? Um, I, I want to tell you, though, there's, there's something they're not telling you about swing speed. Swing speed is not king. It is not the end-all, be-all for hitting long, straight drives. It is important. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's not important. If you only swing your driver at 50 miles an hour, you're probably not going to be reaching 250, 300 yards. All right? So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's not important, but it's not king. It's not the end-all, be-all. There are actually some things that are more important than swing speed, and I'm going to tell you about that right now in this video. Okay, so what is swing speed? Swing speed is how fast your club head is going when it comes through the ball. The theory is that the faster it's going, the further the ball is going to go. If you look at this chart right here, this is typical of any chart that you're going to find if you just simply Google swing speed chart. Um, all the charts will pop up. They're very similar in what they say miles per hour club head speak, speed equals distance. If you do the math, you'll figure out they all average around 2.58 miles or 2.58 yards for every mile per hour that you swing. The theory, therefore, is if you swing at 100 miles an hour, your drives will go 258 yards, roughly. Okay, give or take some different variables and, you know, the environment, your altitude, all that other stuff. Okay, so but that's the basic premise and the basic math. So let's let's think about that. How accurate is that for a measurement of how you're doing when you're practicing trying to hit the ball longer? Let's take a look at Mike Austin for a second. Mike Austin hit a 515 yard drive. According to these charts, 2.58 yards for every mile per hour, 515 yards, he would have had to have had a swing speed of 199 miles an hour. That is humanly impossible. Could not happen. Yet, he did hit 515 yards. Verified by tour officials, verified by his playing partner, who was a PGA champion. Um, there's no doubt that he hit that drive, and it did go 515 miles an hour. Some of you will say, well, I heard he had like a 25 mile an hour, 30 mile an hour tailwind. Okay, great. Let's say that accounted for 60 yards. He still nailed that thing a mile, and the math still doesn't add up. Me personally, the longest drive that I can verify that I hit on a, in a regular course of play, regular course, um, playing at sea level, I'm playing down here in Florida all the time, hit in the fairway, um, it was 341 yards. Now, the reason I say that I could verify that is because there was another course where I hit a drive where my playing partners, they said it was about 362. I didn't really trust the yardage on that particular course. Um, so I just fall back to the 341. But let's get back to my point. 341 yards. If you do the math, that's, I think, somewhere around 132 mile an hour swing speed. I guarantee, without a shadow of a doubt, my swing speed has never even come within 25 miles an hour of 132. Yet I still hit one 341. It had a relatively low trajectory. It flew out a mile, and it did hit, and it rolled some. Okay, but it ended up going 341 miles or 341 yards. How could I do that without swinging 132 miles an hour? If you need further proof, documented proof, digital proof, video proof, and world championship long drive proof, let's take a look at Troy Mullins. I want you to take a look at this drive that she hits here. Set of four. They get all players are using clubs that conform to USGA standards and specifications. A 48 inch total club limit measured at the 60 degree address angle. So these clubs can be played on tour, men and women here. Just a classic setup, classic swing. Just smooth as silk. Oh, that took a huge bounce. That was a huge first bounce on the left side. It's not enough. It's at about 385. 384 officially. 
That's her. That's her fastest ball speed right there. And again, if you, we'll see a little close up here on her legs. There it is. Almost 400. 398. Okay. She just hit that ball 398 yards. 398 yards. But look at her swing speed. 117 miles an hour. Do the math. That doesn't add up. Doesn't add up at all. So how was she able to hit that ball 398 yards with 117 mile an hour swing speed? Okay. So let's say she was at altitude. Okay, altitude is only going to allow you to gain 10 to 20 more yards max. It's, it's not like it's going to give this 100-yard gain. Um, let's say that she had a huge tailwind. Clearly, she doesn't. If you look at Troy's hair and you look at some other videos of her in long drive contest or hitting on the range, when it's windy, that hair is moving. Her hair is not really moving here. Not a lot of wind there. She hit that 398 yards. The way that she's able to do that is her timing and her tempo and her swing style. Okay, what she's doing is she's keeping that perfect seven. She is not swinging with her arms at all. She's not throwing her arms. She's not throwing her upper body. If you look at her upper body, she's not tremendously mus muscular. She's, she's average. She is athletic, but, but she doesn't have a lot of bulk. She doesn't have a lot of upper body strength. But if you look at her legs, her legs are extremely muscle, uh, muscular. And the way Troy is generating that kind of distance isn't through speed, it's through solid contact. She's using those legs. She gets back in her backswing. She almost straightens this, this uh, right knee. And then she throws her hips with all of her might. And that throws all of her body mass into the ball. And she's hitting it with power. Not just speed, but power. And again, don't think that you're going to get power by using your arms really fast. You're going to get power by having a nice, solid structure. All right? Let me explain it to you this way. Let's take a string or a wet spaghetti noodle. Let's get that thing going 200 miles an hour and smack the back of a golf ball. That golf ball is not going anywhere. It right here might roll into my pool, but it's not going anywhere because there's no strength behind that string. There's no strength, no solid foundation behind that wet spaghetti noodle, okay? When it hits, the, t the tip end of that is going to ricochet back, and the ball's not going to go anywhere. What you need is you need a strong, powerful foundation. If you have independently moving arms then you detach them from this foundation, okay? You detach them from your leg muscles, which are the strongest muscles in your body, from that hip throw, and from your large muscles in your back that are turning into that ball. Additionally, if you have a very flippy um, shaft on your driver, uh, Troy says she has a very stiff shaft on her driver. If you have a really flippy um, shaft on your driver, you're, you're, when you come in with a driver, when you come in with any club, but especially with a driver, when that head hits that ball, it's going, it's hitting it with somewhere around 3,000 pounds of force, okay? 3,000 pounds of force. If you have a real whippy shaft, that's going to cause an ever so slight ricochet or recoil, I should say. It's going to cause recoil of the head off that ball, which is going to rob it of distance. It's not going to send it out there as solidly. It's like if you take a hammer, right, with a nice strong handle, and you smack a golf ball with it at any speed at all, that ball, that ball is going a long ways because it's nice and solid. There's no recoil. It's smacking that ball, and it's gone. So you want to use probably a stiffer shaft than what you think, all right? You want to make sure you keep that seven. If you look at Troy Mullen's swing, she keeps that arm back. It never gets out in front of her until long after that ball is gone. Then her arms go out and swing out in front of her. 
and she's throwing those hips at, at the ball. If you look at the Mike Austin swing, he is, he is talking about loading up in the back and then he swings by swinging his hips and swinging his, his, his weight into the swing. And he keeps that left arm or that lead arm up against his chest all the way into impact. That's how you're going to increase your distance. Yes, swing speed is important, but you can get a lot more out of your drives in doing that than you can by spending a ton of time swinging a stick as fast as you can. Now, most of you out there that are hitting at 220, 230 on a good day, you don't want to put that much time and that much effort and that much work just to gain seven yards. You want to be able to go from 220 to 260 to 270, 230 to 280. You want to pick up 50 to 60 yards. Well, if you're going to try to do that through swing speed training, it's going to take a long time to come and it's going to be very difficult. But if you try to do that by learning the proper perfect swing, then getting those kind of gains is a lot more realistic. For me, myself, I used to just be like the average guy. I would go out there and, you know, good drive for me was 220, 230. Uh, once in a great while, if I happened to be teeing off up on top of a hill, and it rolled out close to 250. I was like, woohoo, uh, felt great. When I started to really focus on making good contact with a good tempo, good timing, working on the, the things that, that I learned from Dunaway, from Austin, um, I really started to make progress and I started to make progress very quickly. I was able to go from 220, 230, to suddenly hitting 270, 280, hitting 300. Hit that one drive, 341 yards. The beauty about it is when I stand on a tee box at a golf course, my thought is, all right, Matt, we're swinging at 80%. Just swing at 80%. And I don't have to go up, I don't have to go up to a 400 yard par four and think, oh my word, I got to swing out of my shoes to be able to get the ball to, you know, to where I've got a halfway decent shot at hitting the green from the fairway. I can go up and stand there and think, okay, 80%, 80% is what I need. Just hit it 80%. I tell myself, I only need 250 and I'm at the 150 marker and I'm swinging a really light eight iron and try not to go over the back of the green. So that's what I do. I'll stand up on a 400 yard par four I'll line up and I'll think, okay, all right, I don't want to go more than 250. I, I'm just going to take this nice and easy and go at 80%. And I'll take it back and I'll come through and I'll hit and I'll get up there and I find, huh, okay, 120, 125, light pitching wedge. So that's the difference between working hard, going to the gym, pumping weights, working on swing speed, swinging a bunch of sticks. You can do that, but if you think of the whole swinging the sticks thing, that's swinging your arms. That's contrary to what we want to do. That's not going to help you get the ball out there a long ways. Yeah, it may get your swing speed up there a little bit, but you're not going to be hitting the center of that club face. You're not going to have the good timing, the good tempo, and you're not going to launch it out there the way that you hope. So really work on your timing, your tempo, and learning the techniques that we're teaching here in the Your Simple Golf Swing Method. All right, have a great day. Hope this helps you out.